But what an extraordinary landscape, huh? You see all kinds of animals passing through, grizzly bears, big herds of bison, elk, you know. And when you're out alone, uh, you, you, you don't want to make any noise, or you, you want to whisper if you're talking. To understand this man, Steve Fuller, and his passion for solitude, you have to understand his job. Snowy weekend. He's the winter caretaker of Yellowstone National Park, one of just a handful of hardy souls who remain in this wilderness long after the summer tourists have gone. How do you describe your job here? I usually start off with caretaker, and their immediate response is, have you seen The Shining? <laughs> <laughs> a peek inside Yellowstone's deserted Canyon Lodge, and you can see why. The expectation was that you, would, you were in here for the winter. You got snowed in until you got plowed out. Just getting to Steve took us two hours by snow coach. This job has never been by the calendar or by the clock. You work with uh, the winter. You work with Mother Nature. He lives here in one of the oldest structures in the park, a small cabin on a hill that boasts the only light for miles. I don't have a television, but I have a vast library. At night, when Yellowstone's temperatures can dip to 20 below, his books keep him company, Come on. as we well go. as his cats. Yeah. A cup of tea. His kitchen is crammed with just enough food to make it through the winter. What do you think the value of solitude is? Well, you know, an opportunity for self-knowledge, reflection. Most Yellowstone winter keepers last only a few years, tops. But Steve has stuck out this solitary existence for 42 years, ever since the winter of 1973. I was the only applicant, which is the only reason I got hired. No one else even applied? No one applied. <laughs> I was paid $13.25 a day. Even that didn't discourage you. <laughs> no, no. Did it, was any? it was enough. He raised a family here, homeschooling his two daughters and teaching them the ways of nature. They've gone on to live their own lives, as did his wife. But Steve says he fit best staying put. It seems like it's the kind of job that would suit a hermit pretty well or an eccentric pretty well. How would you describe yourself? Never thought of myself as a hermit. You know, I enjoy solitary time, but I very much enjoy people, too. Do you get lonely? Never. Never do? Never have. Never had cabin fever. Never been bored. There is a lot to keep him busy, and preparation starts early. While parts of the park remain open, many of the facilities have to be tucked in for the park's long winter's nap, which starts the first Monday in November. Okay, and road close signs? Yep, we did that. Okay, that's taken care of. On the way up when we're doing this. So. It's a flurry of activity that seems to send a message to the other residents of the park as well. Animals move in as people move out. Do they? And retake, uh, retake the real estate. Yeah, you know, they say we got some snow coming. So we want to get these water valves staked while we can still find them. With just a few days left before Steve is left alone, we watched his crew complete a to-do list a mile long. On to the next project. At an elevation of more than 7,000 feet, the transition can be fast up here. Going from this... It'll look like a different planet. Really? Different world, for sure. To this, in a matter of days. So you told me when we were here in October that it would be a totally different world, and it's a totally different it world. It is indeed. The weight of winter, 
threatens to crush the lodge and the other buildings in Steve's keep. That is your problem. <laughs> it's one of my hundred problems here. I've got about a hundred buildings. I mean, that's tons of snow up there, right? It is, but uh, I have an ally, gravity. <laughs> <laughs> He's worked out a system, not so much shoveling as sawing the buildings free of their burden. He makes it look easy. But it's a workout, even for someone half of Steve's 70-something weather-worn years. How old are you now? Oh. Old as the hills. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> and you're still able to do this? Well, I've always said, uh, you know, you'll live forever if it doesn't kill you <laughs> doing this work. But it's not all work. Steve has never let a winter slip by without capturing it with his camera. You know, I've seen many wonderful things here. Occasionally get a picture of them. But a lot of the great pictures are in the head, you know, that you couldn't quite pull it off with a camera. All of this steam and moisture becomes super cooled. So anytime they touch something, they flash freeze. Frost crystals, ice crystals, are light catchers. They're like jewels. Some of the jewels he's photographed have even been featured in National Geographic. But seeing is only the half of it. Yellowstone has taught Steve to listen, too. There's all kinds of interesting sounds out here. This is the, an obvious one, a roar. Sometimes, you know, you'll think you hear voices, and actually it's a, it's a spring bubbling and talking, you know. The sound of snow plows, however, will soon be heard in the park, usually around the end of this month, actually making way for the estimated three million tourists who will flock here over the summer. What Steve calls... The coming and going of the great primate migration. <laughs> great primate <laughs> migration. <laughs> you know, it's just part of living in Yellowstone, you know? I've always thought that, you know, winter keepers kind of require a lot of solitude, a lot of empty space, you know, a lot of quiet. And of course, all of that is evaporating. Quicker and more reliable transportation in and out of the park these days has made the winter keeper job not only less solitary, but a little less relevant, too. You think you might be one of the last ones? I suspect so. Do you ever think about retiring? I think of it. They say a lot of people die when they retire, you know? Being Yellowstone's winter keeper isn't a job for Steve Fuller. It's a way of life. Solitary, simple and spectacular.